Hey, you there. Thank you for watching. And welcome to Forge Lines Forever. Today, I have a 7v7 custom match here on the most uh, amazing Naroxis map generator. So let's go ahead and introduce our teams and our players. Starting off with Team 1 here in the north, ending with Team 2 in the south. Starting off with Team 1's western player, and then working our way eastward, we have it in Tropical Ocean Blue. Sock full of kids. He is an Aeon for this match as a 1400. We have in Regal Purple, Elu. I think that's how you say his name. He is a Cybran as a 1000 rated. In Pac Man Yellow, in the middle of their lineup, we have Danky Kang. He is a Cybran. He is a 1200. To the northeast, we have in Light Oak Tan, the UEF player of Twitchy Mofo. He is a 1400. Zigzagging across their southeastern lineup, we have Jagged so Jagged Sauce, not Jagged Sauce. He is a Cybran, and he is a 1400 in Rust. In the regular slot here for Team 1, we have in Chevy Crimson. I make we're on you. He is an Aeon for this match. He is the highest rated player on Team 1 and in the game overall. And last but not last but not least there for Team 1, we have an Amethyst Purple Note. He is a Cybran as a 2,000 rated player. So for Team 1 side of the map, they have three Cybran, two Aeon, and one UBF, sorry, four Cybran, two Aeon, and one UBF. The the icons keep flipping around, which means Team One lacks Seraphim technology. Starting off with Team Two's Western player, and then working our way eastward as well, we have it in lightish red pink, Rekether as a Cybran, as a fifteen hundred. In Barbie pink to his east, we have it in yeah Barbie pink. We have Randy Savage as an Aeon. As an 1100, my brain kind of just froze there for a second. In Ruby Red to his east, we have Blarg 6516 as a UEF as a 1200. In Forest Green, the best color in all of Spring Commanderdom is Hyper 2001 as a Cybran as a 1300. To the northeast, we have in Imperial Gray Nyx as an Aeon as a 1700. And in the regular slot here for Team 2, we have in. Batman Gray, Bannable Offense. He is a 2,000 rated player, the highest rated player on Team 2. And again, he is an Aeon for this match. And last but not least, in Orange to Color Orange, moving his way to the front lines, we have XRAR. He is a Cybran as a 1,700. So for Team 2 side of the map, they have three Aeon, three Cybran, and one UEF, which means the difference between Team 1 and Team 2 is Team 1 has four Cybrans, two. Aeon Team 2 has three Cybrans, three Aeon. And, of course, each team has one UEF, which means for the entirety of this game, there are no Seraphim players. Apologies to those who love to arrive late but love to make grand entrances. Hopefully you enjoy the game nonetheless. And for 14 players on the map, let's take a look at how much reclaim they have to scoop up. Currently sitting at, drumroll please, 74,000 mass. Which means it is roughly 5,000 mass per player. And, I mean, at this point, I'm just going to say it. It is everywhere. I mean, the high concentration, of course, is down the middle. But it is everywhere on this map. So these players are going to scale their eco, scale their units, scale the everything. And cliff sides very, very quickly. Speaking of which, we have Team 1's Jagged Sauce. Getting a nice little upper plateau with his mirror of Team 2's next, doing the same thing with some transported units. A Piper 2001 to help assist on that upper plateau. In terms of mechs on the map, let's take a look at Team one side of the map. There is a nice quad mechs over position here for Socked Full of Kids. Next to him is Ilu at his quad mechs position. There is another quad mechs position that Twitch Mofo is already in the middle of. And looks like that's really it. Looks like a you know small, not super grouped together over there. There's a couple of mexes down the middle line here, but besides that, there's really not a lot of large grouping of mexes. So players have pretty much already grabbed the main core set of mexes, whether that be of course their main base mexes and the expansionary efforts. There's nothing in the back line as well. So yeah, pretty much just going to be kind of down this middle section here where my cursor is. 
where kind of Danky King is standing and starting to move southward. There are three main contention points. There is the eastern side, there is the middle, and the west. West is a little bit broken up here with this nice little hill here. And Cliff making land engagements different to deal with because, of course, the pathfinding is going to go around instead of straight down the middle. This one's just straight down the middle with a little bit of a little pathway here, but that's probably going to be really only used for Team 1 units or T1 units, not Team 1 units. And in the east, we have conflict between x -Bar and Note. x -Bar at 7,800 and Note at 87. So if one dies and the other one is dropping at the same rate of hit points, it will be a murder-suicide situation. And of course, it would be very disappointing in this 7v7 to have players evacuate or blow up or die or whatever phrasing you want to use this early in the game. But it does happen, of course. It is always... Oh, it just It just depends on the situation, but... It's always disappointing to like, have players leave early for whatever reason, whether they die because of a game issue, die because of skill issue, die because of whatever issue. We do see that XR is retreating. He did drop into the yellow very briefly, who should be getting back up into the green here shortly with a uh, note you know, on the low green side of things. The pink forces in the west starting to mount with Randy Savage leads in the charge with the spam. And we see Wrecker, they're going for stealth, very interestingly, not gun. We do see that the forces inbound from Danky Kang have actually retreated and are going to just hold this position, probably not allowing any sort of run bys down the middle here. Nice little engineer outbound from Jagged Sauce just to get some sort of eco damage on Team 2, mainly just, of course, scooping reclaim. Large group of forces building up over here to the west here for Team 2's x -Rar. We do see Hyper 2001. Coming in to assist, he's helping on the plateau side of things. And with his assistance, we do see that Nyx has been able to completely eradicate Team 1's forces up here. This facility is going to go down, even with the Mantis that was going to be built. That does get built. It is not going to be enough. It will provide Team 1 a nice little sore spot of contention. Team 2 a nice little kind of uh, outlook or um, overwatch area. To look at what Team 1's up to. Gun has been started for Note and for Jacksaws. T2 started for Randy. Gun started here for Rekether after that stealth upgrade finishes. Blark almost done with his T2. We have Elu at or starting T2. And I think that's everybody for upgrades. And it does look like everybody has left their main base for Team 1. In some degree or the other. We do see that uh, Amic Warren you has joined his teammates in the front line. And Team 2 side of things, it looks like everybody except for Bannable Offense has joined the front line in some regard, which means Team 2 will be down a player. And in this regard, in the east, it is a 3v2. In this directly, it is a 2v2, but all this player of Jacksaws has to do is move in and assist, and there'll be an easy 3v2 engagement. Going for stealth, going for gun, going for gun for these players trying to get some offensive capabilities or more of them I should say online as quickly as possible. Reckoth are charging him with his nan is a nano, his stealth and gun. And Randy does have the sensor package and T2, so more of a defensive and versatile uh, set of upgrades versus the more offensive style here for Reckoth. Yeah, Reckoth there had to make sure I actually keep track of who is who. Of course this is the vision that Randy Savage gets from that sensor package upgrade. Definitely one of the more underutilized upgrades. It is unique to the Aeons alone. It is unique to the Aeons alone. That's kind of not a double negative, but it's uh, redundant. And they are the only ones that can build them. It's definitely one of those situational things. Yeah, speed is nice, but if you're not going to be on the front lines, you might as well provide vision. Because why not? Rar going for, looks like a stealth upgrade. Hyper 2001 did assist a little bit with that. So one upgraded commander, one non-upgraded commander facing down a huge host of forces from the west and the east on this eastern side of the map. Jax not sending his comm in, deciding to stay back. x might get overwhelmed here to the east. It's not really looking good here for Team 2's x -Ray. He's been taking a beating, and now with Note just bearing down on him, x trying to get some veterans. He does get to one star. Probably should start focusing that commander. We do see that I make Wan Yu is coming into assist. He also has the sensor package online and gun, that being the range upgrade. And Jack Sauce going for his stealth upgrade. x trying to retreat, but it just might be a walk down here. Drops into the red. Needs to get out of there immediately. He gets body blocked a little bit, gets body blocked a little bit more. Note tries to catch up to him, and he's doing a great job of it. Sub 15,000 hit points. Note 
Going to receive a lot of damage from these uh, bombers. But now Hyper 2001's over here. He's dropping into the yellow. And there goes Team 2's extra, our first casualty of the game at sub 10 minutes in the West. Nothing's really kicking off besides this engagement here between Blarg and Danky Kang, but there's no comms involved besides that. And now we see Hyper 2001 gets killed by Node as well. So it's a double kill here for Team 1's Eastern players of Note. And of course, you know, I make one you did help a little bit. And there's now a 7v5 in favor of the northern team of team one a huge huge loss here for team two especially now that this base here under the control of nix is being bombarded pd trying to come online team one would probably have been better than the t2 upgrade the t2 pd version but look at this pressure just continuing to mount team one's probably just trying to cleanse the eastern edge of the map and essentially just pushed westward entirely we do see a little bit of posturing here between these forces in the west, but no real uh, engagements one way or the other. This is where all of the action is happening. Of course, two players have already died over here. So a huge, huge loss, and it's just continuing to mount. The losses are continuing to get bit bigger and bigger for Team 2, and the wins bigger and bigger for Team 1. T3 Air is online for Bandable Defense, going for stealth, sorry, for stealth, going for speed on board going from multiple air facilities and pigeons just to scale his uh, production capabilities as fast as possible. I make war on you and note continuing to pressure one of course has range and vision being the sensor package and of course gun and stealth for note. We haven't seen any movement yet from Jack Sauce. He might make some movement now that his uh, stealth upgrade is done but he might just hold back because his two teammates are doing such a great job on this eastern edge here. Look at, look at how far they're pushing in. Tons of spam. We now see T2 forces augmenting the T1s. Huge, huge win here for Team 2. They need to get some sort of victory on the cards. Or it might just be a complete wipe by Team 1. Bombers inbound trying to just kind of slow down notes. Our aggression. We do see that uh, advance range has now been done. Battle Offense has gone for the shield and he's just going to send his commander forward. This might be the save that Team 2 desperately needs. If he goes down... That might just be game at that point, which, if you've seen the timestamp, it isn't. But still, it you know, it is the possibility. There's always a possibility. Just like, you know, we could be hit by an asteroid. It's a small possibility, but it's still a possibility. We have some interceptors fighting over top here. Team 1's note trying to clean the skies of Team 2's. Couple of restorers now coming online trying to distract all of those interceptors. Interceptors going to try to blitz that thing down. Restorer is probably going to go down, but lots of interceptors are not going to make it out of there. And looks like uh, another ASF on the cards here shortly. Restorer does go down. AA being built as fast as possible. Bannable Defense coming in with his gun calm. PD also being built to try to shoo away these forces. It does look like the Amethyst Purple player of note has fallen back, but Imic Warnu has not stopped moving. He wants to get as much damage as he can done. He has sensor and a range, and his opponent has speed, shield, and range. So same range, sorry, no, better range for Bannable Offense. Worse range for Amik Wanyu, and this could just be a walk down here. Will Bannable Offense just do that? I mean, they're already down two players. You might as well make it a, set, a 6v5 instead of a 7v5. There is, uh, you know, thoughts for that. Bannable Offense still being bombarded by forces inbound from Note from the north. We see more and more PD coming online to assist with defense. Lots of PGens have gone down, but T3 are augmenting those losses. Most of those forces now gone here for Note. So it's a couple of forces, but mainly the ones from I Make War and You exist. And it looks like it's PD creeping in his own base here for Team 2's Bannable Offense. Just trying to keep this calm, this player, this opponent away from his air grid. We see bombers coming in constantly here from another player on Team 2 from Blarg just trying to just get this kill. We see the flag from nearby forces from Team 1 almost take out the Restore. I think they will get it here shortly. There it goes. But the damage is done. Looks like Bannable Defense will shoo away. Possibly. I don't know. Amik Wanyu is not going to continue to pressure the advance, but of course Mex is taken offline. All five of them, I might add, for those core Mexes for Bannable Offense. Huge loss. Essentially neutered a player, killed two of them. Huge, huge loss here for Team 2. The eco is severely favoring Team 1 at over 150 mass more per second versus the other side of the map. 
Still no real incursion either between Team 1 or Team 2 over here. Lots of forces just kind of running around. We have some Team D that have been built. They're being wiped out here by Team 1's forces from Denki Kang. We have a small contingent of forces down here in the corner just trying to wreak some havoc. It looks like Bannable is just going to stand there in defense of his infrastructure and his livelihood. And it's really just been a lot of the action on the eastern side. We now see some movement from Jagsauce. I don't know if he's just going to come and assist. There are some Harbingers inbound from Nyx. Don't know if they'll get a lot of work done. They probably should have grouped up a little bit before they engaged. The shield, the Asylum goes down. One Harbinger and one Flat Cannon isn't going to be enough. And the Harbinger does go down essentially in one shot from that overcharge. More restores are being built by Team 2's Battle Offense. A small base has tried to be established here for note. Looks like it was mainly just a reclaim operation, not necessarily a I'm going to stay here and live here kind of operation. ASF's trying to protect the area, but there are a decent amount of gunships, so those ASFs will have a hard time at fighting those gunships. Large group of forces over here still holding position for Randy. And Reckether has a lot of spam as well. Team 1 now winning the mass game at over 200 mass per second. Team 2 at 600 and of course Team 1 at 800 to boot. Lots of mass in Team 1's coffers. I wonder what they'll spend it on. And of course T2 air facility still the main stage here for Imic Wan Yu. T2 also for who's that's Note. For Jack Sauce. T3 air also online for the light oak tan player of Twitch Mofo. So he's essentially the air player, but there's three potential air players as well for Team 1. Four air players is a lot of air power to have in this game. Team 2 only has the one, and they have a T3 land, T3 land. I don't see any T2 or T3 air. So yeah, only the Team 2's rigor slot player of Bannable Offense has dipped his toes into T2 and now T3 air tech. We're starting to see kind of a nice divide here between these forces. A lot of spam for Team 1. Definitely higher tiered, more tanky units for Team 2. So it's is it about cannon fodder or is it about the quality of units? The quantity versus quality debate is always a good one to have depending on the item you're talking about. These restorers just charging through. There is some flak they're fighting through, but uh, they should be fine, especially if the commander of Bannable Defense will push in, which it looks like he's not. Nyx over here does have T2 on board. Really needs to get into this position and just shore up defenses. Even though it's a decent looking position, it's pretty weak considering the minor power power here for Team 1. Three commanders. All of them have some form of gun. Some of them have better guns than others. But at a minimum, they have something transport drops off a brick going after the radar system nice grab there trying to deny enemy intelligence love 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 to see that large group of forces to the west here for sock full of kids making a play for that plateau that has no mexes on it but uh you know it's something i guess looks like team one's ilu is falling back for the time being does want to get sniped looks like most of the comms are either headed back or kind of just kind of being very standoffish Besides Bannable Offense, who's just going to continue to press, and he desperately needs to. He needs that income from this dead player's facility. He needs any and all help he can get. We do have a lot of Harbingers starting to push back the Rust player of Jagsauce down the middle here. Looks like the Harbingers have learned better from the mistakes of their predecessors and fallen back. Lots of dead units. Looks like it was all Control K'd just to scoop up for Reclaim. Doesn't want their opponent to get any easy veteran scene. We do see that that brick does go down before it causes devastating damage to the upper plateau facilities. And now we see the missiles raining down from this plateau on the Team 2 side of the map. Team 1's doing a very good job now of essentially holding the middle, keeping Team 2 back quite a ways. Now we see a lot of pushback here in the east from Team 2, specifically Nyx, but also from Bannable Offense. He's the air player and he's fighting on land. Advanced range has been started for Imic War on you. Lots of engineers coming for reclaim, but a couple of Harbingers to boot as well. One of the, both these comms have to be careful. It could be an easy kill, especially with Nyx inbound. He doesn't have gun, but he does have T2. He can easily build some PD and essentially just slowly PD creep this position. A couple more mechs have been rebuilt. Looks like Bannable Offense ignores this mech and decides to head out towards the front line and assist his restorers in pushing Team 1's 
comms back or killing them or both. We do see a push down the middle. Tons of Titans down the middle here from Belark. Ripping apart T2 forces. Decent amount of Hoplite. Decent amount of Vipers. Decent amount of Rhinos to try to hold off these Titans. But you could just see the tide is turning in the middle between the T2 mainly force and the T3 mainly force. Especially once uh, the Blarg player, the Blarg, the Blarg player, but the player of Blarg, 65-16, goes for those Percy's. Doesn't look like he's gone for them quite yet, but uh, no, look, oh no, I see a couple of them. Well, no, those are Titans, never mind. No Percy's as of yet. No, no Percy's, but I will hope to see them here soon. They are my favorite T3 unit in the game, and I will definitely not ever stop saying that. You see in the West, Reketh are continuing to just hold the line took out a lot of units lost a lot of units but now he has bricks but now team one is trying to catch up in the technology department but they have a lot of mass to spend almost oh, it's 12k yeah i highly doubt that 1.2k versus 1k here for team two team two have started to catch up but now we see a large t3 force inbound for notes and i make force commander firebase is down lots of harmages in this mix they could easily go for a kill here and looks like they're going for notes He's the one that can fire a lot faster than his opponent, than his teammate of Imic War on you. More range on Imic War on you, but the fire rate is definitely a little important, more important. Note tries to get out of there. There are some forces here for Imic War on you to assist. Oh, it looks like Note might get out of there. There are gunships inbound, though. He's going to probably go for the kill. Gunships retreat a little bit. Oh, but Imic War on you. Now he's suffering. Note. Oh, it's not going to be a murder suicide. There are some bricks. And they hold off the Harbinger threat. Ooh, that was close there for Team 1's dual commanders over here. Of course, Amic Wan Yu below 1,500. And no, you know, he's at 14,000 hit points now, but uh, total. But, uh, sorry, eight, is it 18,000? Sorry, 18,000 hit points, 14,000 mass killed. It's looking very dire for both these players, but they get out of dodge, which is the most important thing. Was very, very close here. We do see a large Titan Force now going down this little, tiny little strip here. And there they go, moving in to go for the whatever they can get on their on Team one side of the map. We could see a base assassination. Titans can get out of range of bricks very quickly due to their, you know, faster movement speed. We do see they are now more T3 units on the cards here for Amic Warnu and Note. There are a lot of shields here coming to assist the already personal shields of the Harbingers. And these bricks and Harbingers from Team 1 might not stand the test of time. Fanable Offense slowly pushing in. Doesn't want to overextend, but wants to make sure that there's no sort of run buys. Like what's happening up here to the north. Titans now moving into critical systems. There are some mexes that are definitely going to go offline. We do have a couple of bricks and be airdropped on top of them, but unfortunately... The Titans will be able to blitz them down quite quickly here. They're going to drop right there, right essentially behind those Titans, or to the side of them. We do see those bricks slowly just trying to close off any sort of escape vectors. We could see an attempt of the Titans to actually fall back and collapse on top of Jag Saw's position. We have some transports inbound. Is that transports? Bombers inbound just getting wiped out by some flak. And now we see that uh, Battle of Offense continuing to push in. Titans now in the main base here for Jaxos. Critical Systems, Mexes, PD, or P not PD, PGens. All of the every important things are not having fun here. Another Mex goes offline. Another Mex goes offline. Another Mex going to go offline. PGen about to explode. Could easily be taken up, but is not being targeted. It looks like there's enough firepower here. Notes actually over here as well with his commander. Looks like he was dropped off to assist. T3, Pigeon is the target. They might get it. It's going to be decent, but no. Let about 500 hit points, a little bit more than that, remain. Arbiter is now pushing back at Bannable Offenses forces over there. The Titans, of course, were dealt with. Note now back on a transport. Definitely very risky, but very useful to do to get your comm somewhere. Very, very quickly. 23 minutes almost on the clock here. Team 1 at 7 players left. Team 2 at 5. The eco gap has definitely shortened. We see Team 1 at 1.5k. We saw Team 2 at 1.4. So, again, the, eh, it's just kind of shifting. So, I'd say at least a decent 150 mass more for Team 1 than Team 2. Maybe 100 or so. 
we'll see as time goes on how those numbers change. But let me know down in the comments who you think is going to currently win this game. Of course, if you haven't done so already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so very much for watching. Of course, I really, really, really do appreciate it. Anything and everything you do for the channel, I will always sing your praises. So thank you, 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 thank you. Thank you. And now we see another Titan push, but it is being pushed back by these bricks and Team 1 bombers. The same trick is not going to work twice. Uh, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, same on me, sort of things. Team 2, you're building anything spicy in the background. You're not really doing well on the uh, map control side of things. They're starting to fight back a little bit, but it's a huge back and forth. The eco now at 1.5, 1.6, so it is closing quite quickly. Nyx builds an experimental. It most likely is a Colossus, and it is moving to the front. Note builds an experimental, most likely a monkey. It is a monkey going for the crab next. More experimentals for Team 1. Uh, Colossus coming online here for Imic War on You. Ergo being expanded for Twitchy Mofo. Haven't seen a whole lot out of him just besides his ASF being very, very defensive. I don't blame him. He's just trying to defend his teammates and his side of the map. No other experimentals for Team 1 over to the west so far. Team 2, Crab has been started here for Rekather skipping the monkey, or maybe he built a monkey. Looks like he didn't, so he's skipping it. Colossus already built by Randy. No Fat Boys as of yet, or any sort of spicy satellite plays. And nothing out of yet for the airplay here for Team 2 as of yet. Lots of mass, sorry, not bass, energy being donated to Note. Looks like he's going for laser on board that commander, being very, very risky. Sitting at 108 hit points regen per second. Looks like it will go for cloaking next. We do see that Jack Sauce is falling back once again, and he's probably just going to stay back. Doesn't want to get sniped. There is that monkey nearby to protect him a little bit, but he's a little bit cautious, of course, if you notice that Colossus that is now inbound. We do see this nice little radar installation that is going to go down. There is no hope of that coming back online anytime soon once that Colossus is done with it. Cloaking is coming online here for No. He is going to take him a little bit to get that up and running. It costs a lot of power and energy. Power and energy. Power and mass to spend and to run. He has to make sure he has the reserves and the production to do so. You can see that power in negative 24,000. And Team 2's player of Nyx, Control K's. Even he's confused. He's like, what the heck happened? My NGs. I did my... Oh, no! He clicked on his NGs, and I guess he clicked on his comm by accident. Oh, no! I meant to control came my NGs. Dang it! Oh, that's rough. So we have an accidental evacuation here from Team 2. That's now a 7v4. Huge, huge loss. That was their 1700 ready player. That is definitely going to hurt. Tactical Nuke is done here for Blark. So Tactical Billy Nuke is online for Team 2. And now Bannable Offense owns everything on the eastern half of the map here for Team 2. Essentially, it's Blark to the west, you know, Blark and everything west. And Bannable Offense east of him. And that force continues to pressure the Monkey Lord attacking at a little bit of range. We saw some Mercies being thrown at this. Not. Really doing a lot of damage, though, but, you know, it's something, I guess. Of course, I'm very disappointed that they changed how the Mercies work, essentially to become a non -vi not really a viable unit anymore. I mean, yeah, you can still use them, but it's not as fun to watch a Mercy Sniper, not as fun as other things to, you know, essentially this AoE. Of course, uh, pings are going down here for Notes Commander being like, hey, there's a laser cloaking commander. you got to watch out for that thing. And Team 2 is falling back because of it in the west still standoff tactics here from everybody no desire to push in team one's more than happy just to eco team two's looks like they're more than happy to just eco so it's mainly the fighting over here to the east is the crucial point it's probably going to be whoever can crack the eastern side whether that be team one to team two or team two to team one might not necessarily sweep, but it's going to be huge and might just cause the other team to either just give up or control K or whatever the case may be. 
just because that's a lot of stuff that will go down. The air grid, of course, will go down if they get close to that. The air grid will get down, obviously, close to that, that sort of thing. So the eastern side is the main theater of war, while the western side is kind of just trench warfare at this point. Just put a bunch of lines up, throw some shells at one another, sit back, relax, get a nice little coffee, drink, tea, soda, whatever you drink, gamer subs, G Fuel, whatever, water, milk, OJ, AJ, apple juice, OJ, the orange juice, and it, cranberry juice. I know people like cranberry juice. I'm, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not a huge fan of it. I will drink it from time to time because why not? If I stay in a hotel or something and they have it, I'll have a cup or something. But I don't like go out and buy it. So, just one of those things. It it, it is not bad. I've had some without high fructose corn syrup. That stuff is really good. The the stuff that's with the cane sugar, delicious. Delicious cane sugar. That's why I get the uh, IBC Rupers. If you ever had them in those glass bottles, made with uh, cane sugar, that is delicious. It is delicious, and I am of the opinion of soda in glass bottles takes way better than bottle regular plastic bottles or the cans. Of course, I am just one man, but I am entitled to my opinion, as is everyone on the planet. We do see a Colossus now online and a Crab to boot here for Team One. Team 2 only has two Colossi. I don't know if that's going to be enough for Team 2 to hold off. They really need more firepower. They are going to get a third one here shortly. But the extra range, air quotes on extra, but the more range on board the Crab is going to be huge. Bombers try to invade but get just eradicated by those ASFs from Twitchy Mofo. He's really just... Kept his ASFs over here. Hasn't really pushed them to the west or whatever the case may be. He's just kind of kept them over here. He's noticed that this is a huge problem if this goes down. So he's putting a lot of his effort over here. Also, you know, Bannable Offense's ASFs are over here. So might as well put them where the other ASFs are kind of thing. We do see that those experimentals are slowly encroaching on Team 2's side of the map. Facility does go down, unfortunately. But it's a Team 1 land facility. Not really that important. Missile outbound. What's it going for? Probably not a comm snipe. Probably just a going after some unit snipe. It's going to land. It's going to land. It's going to land. Looks like it possibly was going for a comm snipe. Or at least a comm shot at least. But that sounds weird. Or it sounds close to something else. For those of you who know, they know. I'm not saying it again. So there it is. Nuke is outbound from Team 1. Sock full of kids going after the air grid. For Team 2's Bannable Offense. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is not good. There is an SMD built. It is not loaded. That nuke is sailing over here. Team 2 does not have another SMD somewhere, at least on this eastern side. So that's going to land, and that's not going to feel good. And now we have this kind of like rope-a-dope scenario where we have forces going eastward and forces going westward. And it's uh, like ring around the rosy, essentially. Hey, we're over here. You're supposed to fight over here. Why are you going that way? What is going on with this? We see another Colossus inbound for Team 2's Bannable Offense. Is he just going to push in? Is Team 1 and Team 2 just going to trade at this point? I don't know, but now they turn around. So looks like they are going to engage on this side of the map. And if Team 2 can break through, that is huge. If Team 1 can break through, that is huge. Coward, go in, says no. Don't know what that's in reference to, but it's in reference to something. Colossus engaging on the eastern flank. Here come the Colossus grouping up one another. Of course, the beam is inverted, so you can actually see it on the map. Of course, the crab doing tons and tons and tons of damage to those Colossi. Power is down for Bannable Offense. Doesn't have the additional shielding on board the Harbingers. Huge loss there. That's a thousand hit points he's not getting. Of course, the Colossus focusing at the crab. Because why would they not? There are some asylums trying in to shield them a little bit. Harbingers inbound. Or sorry, Harbingers. Monkey inbound to the host of Harbingers trying to deal with all of those Colossi. First experimental down for Team 2 and 1. Second one down for Team 2. Restorer is going after the Galactic Colossus. Corsair is going after the second Colossus. A ASF fight happens going after those gunships. And it's just going to be a matter of time. Oh. Kaboom! Takes out the entire air grid for Team 2, or pretty much all of it. 
Another Colossus is down. Notes Commander is here hanging out next to three dead Colossi. And of course, the air fight is won by Team One's Twitchy Mofo. 32 minutes on the clock here, and it's not looking good for Team Two if you're rooting for Team Two. There's, of course, the comm is hanging out behind the crab. We have the other comm who's cloaked and has the shield on board, the crazy cybern that he is. Lots of engineers to the pyre. Those are just dead NGs. To the west, another fight breaks out. Crab v. Crab looks like Team 2 will lose that fight. And it's not looking good for Team 2 in either field, theater of war or field of war. Field? Theater? No, field would be like air, land, sea. Theater would be environment. Or maybe. Maybe it's interchangeable. I don't know. Let me down in the, down in the comments if you know one way or the other. But in this case, Team 2, not looking good. We have the eastern side has collapsed. Tons of reclaim for Team 1 to scoop up. We have, of course, the land army inbound. There is no experimental to defend this incursion. There is a Colossus almost done. Crab. Blark finishes an experimental. It is a fat boy, but it's going to take a while to get that to the front line. We do see that his Colossus is moving into assist. It might be enough to stem the tide. It may not be. And looks like it's going to be a repeat of earlier in the match. Team 1 is continuing southward. Like I said, not really looking good here for Team 2. The calm, uh, the calm of Blarg inbound from a transport. Is he going to shoot the Billy? What is his range on the Billy? He can fire in... Well, I clicked on his calm. There we go. Anything in the yellow. And there goes the missile. It is up and it's going for this little grouping over here. Actually, Note gets spotted very briefly. And then they lose sight of him, then they get him, and then lose sight of him, then they get him again. Oh, those forces are going to group up. No, it's going to get out of range just barely. Everything's going to get out of range of that Billy Nuke. Unfortunate. Stop scouting me, says Note. Stop it. And the Billy Nuke will land. No damage done. We have some gunships over here going after some engineers and a couple of uh, mexes. It does look like uh, Blarik has been spotted. They're going to target the transport. Don't even continue firing at it. But uh, looks like Blarik is not going to feel good now. He's rebuilding his Billy Nuke, but it uh, looks like that Time is over, possibly. Satellite overhead for Twitchy Mofo. GG says socks full of kids. And you can see the western side just collapsing. I'm going to split things just to show the demise of Team 2. You can see it in real time. Eastern side is collapsing. A couple more experimentals have been built. Western side, Rekather is losing hit points quite quickly. Sub 4,000 and falling. Blarg about to rebuild his building nuke once again. Sub 3,500. Tom's hit points not feeling good. Sub 2,500. Overcharge goes out. Kills off a Harminger. Oh, is he going to survive? I don't know. He might survive, but just barely. Two Colossi, but there's one Colossus and two Crabs for Team 1. One Colossus already down for Team 2. Rekather does going to rank eventually back up into the yellow. Huge, huge. That was uh, very much needed here for him. Like I said, it is not looking good. Of course, there's the nuke up here to the north for Team 1. That's half-loaded. That's the second nuke, sorry. This one killed off 72,000 mass. Really, 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 really good nuke there. Another Billy Nuke app I'm going to land on top of I make more on U's position. Will he get out of range? Yes, his shields protect him a little bit. He... I don't know if he would have died without the shields. Bannable offense control case. You can see the end is nigh. It is now a 7v3, and yes, there is a desync, but you can see what the game, the way this game is going. The eastern side is pretty much collapsed at this point. It's only just a matter of time. There is another Colossus standing strong. We have a Monkey Lord chasing down the comm of Blarg. They know where he is. They're going for him. He's a dead man. There's going to be two comms remaining, and at that point, in a 7v5, oh, sorry, 7v2, excuse me, once Blarg does kick the bucket here, Blazer turns, faces the comm. Blarg, oh, if you had a missile, you could try to fire it. You don't have a missile. Unfortunate. There he goes. The eastern side is now going up in flames. And it's just going to be a cleansing of the map. And team choose remaining players. Recall out of the match. They're like, see you not dealing with this buy. We did even see that uh, team choose record there was under bombardment from these bombers. MVP for this match goes to the Mad Lad himself. I think Note was a huge driver for Team Two winning this. Sorry, Team One winning this game. 
He killed off two players, put a lot of pressure down on Bannable Offense, and really kept him at bay for a long time. You know, essentially cut off his air, you know, his mass supply for his air grid. And then you had Nix, and and that's, this is an unfortunate thing. He control kid. Maybe the match would have lasted a little bit longer had he survived and kept, you know, kept living. But I think the trend was kind of already in Team One's direction. The Western side were kind of just there. We didn't have some out pushing of units here from Blarg down the middle. But Team One's Western players would just hold the line, don't push too far in, maybe push a little bit if you need to, or push back or fall back a little bit. But it was just keep Team Two at bay and shove it for Team 1 on this eastern side. But again, let me know down in the comments what you felt about this. A little bit of a shorter match. It's not as long as I normally cast, especially with a 7v7. But I found a 7v7, and it was you know pretty much with no incident besides that desync closer to the end. Hopefully everybody enjoyed it. If you did, let me know down in the comments with a like, a subscribe, if you haven't done so already, a share, and anything for YouTube to promote my channel even further. Thank you so very much for watching, and I will see all of you in the next one.